As a reminder, Precision Boost Overdrive aims to maximize the system performance in case you have adequate cooling and adequate components. The performance is determined by a variety of factors such as CPU temperature, type of workload, number of active cores, power consumption, current draw, and so on. When the processor has additional headroom, Precision Boost Overdrive will automatically raise the operating frequencies. See, this is why you need to know about Precision Boost Overdrive. While AMD has shared some information on how this technology works, the exact algorithm hasn't really been shared with the public, so we don't really know exactly what happens. But here's what we do know. The Precision Boost Overdrive algorithm takes into account information from various sources. The sources include a wide range of on-die sensors that monitor temperature, current, core usage, and so on, as well as the pre-programmed information such as the maximum boost frequency. Funny tidbit is that the advertised maximum boost frequency is actually slightly lower than the programmed max boost frequency. For example, on this 5600X, the advertised max turbo boost is 4.6 GHz, and the maximum program frequency, also known as Fmax, is 4.65 GHz. Another great example is the 16-core 5950X, which appears to have an Fmax of 5050 MHz, while only having an advertised boost of 4.9 GHz. Anyway, let's go back to the Precision Boost Overdrive algorithm. Based on all of these inputs, the algorithm determines the available voltage headroom and frequency to maximize system performance. Typically, the better your cooling, the more headroom you have. The key takeaway from all this is that the CPU frequency will be limited by its pre-programmed Fmax, regardless of how amazing your cooling is. In this case, we have paired our 65 watt Ryzen 5 6 core with a pretty high end custom loop water cooling. So there should be plenty of headroom left in the die. So what is the big brain play I hear you asking? Well, remember when I said the programmed if max is the absolute limit? A light, sort of. There's a way to offset the maximum turbo boost using an option called F max offset. Fmax offset is an option that allows you to raise the Fmax ceiling of your processor in steps of 25 megahertz up to 200 megahertz. So in the case of the 5600X from 4.65 gigahertz to 4.85 gigahertz. I also got around to making some charts, which I think will help you better understand how precision boost overdrive works, in particular the frequency and the voltage. So I used hardware info to track the frequency and the voltage during two back-to-back -back runs of Geekbench 5. Geekbench 5 is great for this purpose because it's a mixture of single and multi-threaded workloads, heavy and, and, and light workloads. So you can really see the PBO algorithm in, in action. Um, yeah, so uh, let me jump to the charts. I collected information on three types of data, VID, core frequency and effective clock. VID is the core voltage that's requested by the CPU. It's very straightforward. Core frequency is the frequency that's configured by the CPU and read from the CPU registers. So typically this will be the frequency that you'll see pop up in CPU-Z for example. Effective clock measures the average actual clock across the polling interval. The difference between the two values is that the core frequency is the frequency as measured at one specific moment in time, whereas the effective clock measures the total of clock cycles between those two moments in time. These two measurements can differ a lot because modern CPUs like Ryzen 5000 have very advanced power saving features. When a CPU core has nothing to execute, it will quickly go to a low power state. This is great because that opens up more power budget for any of the other cores that do need to execute. So those other cores may boost to a higher frequency. So let's have a look at the frequency behavior. I took all the data points of the operating frequency of each core at every timestamp and placed them in a bucket of 50 megahertz ranging from 3 gigahertz to 4.85 gigahertz. 
We find that with automatic PBO, the core frequency throughout the two benchmark runs is at base frequency about 35% of the time and spends about 20% of the time at the F max of 4.65 gigahertz. Hitting the maximum frequency so often is a great indication that most likely there's plenty of headroom left in the CPU. PBO with FMAX offset of 200 megahertz has the CPU configured about 20% of the time at 4.65 to 4.85 gigahertz and almost 10% of the time at the maximum frequency. So my gut feeling here tells me that maybe there's even more headroom left in the CPU, but there's simply no way to extract that extra performance. Looking at the effective clock, we find that actually about 75% of the time one or more cores are idling at low power and low frequency. Think about that. While running the benchmark, 75% of the time the cores are idling. That's very generous of those cores as they open up the opportunity for the cores that are doing tasks to hit higher frequencies. If we zoom in on the boost frequency range, we can see that the actual time spent at an effective clock of 4.65 gigahertz or above is 2.55% for automatic precision boost overdrive and 3.71% with that FMAX offset, so slim margins. Then I also took all the data points of the VID of each core at every timestamp and placed them in buckets of 15 millivolts ranging from 0.9 volt to 1.47 volt. We can make two more key observations. The first observation is that we can see the PBO algorithm working fine when we're using this IFMAX offset. We lifted the frequency ceiling and then the algorithm, which has access to an extended voltage range, can enable that additional frequency. Interestingly, the highest measured VID for the automatic PBO is 1.38 volts for 4.65 gigahertz. And the highest measured VID for PBO with the IFMAX offset is 1.45 volts for 4.85 gigahertz. The second observation is that the PBO algorithm will increase the voltage well beyond 1.4 volts. I'm sure it makes some people watching this video uncomfortable, as the common recommendation would be to keep the voltage below or around 1.3 volts. Well, it just proves that higher voltage by itself is not an issue. It's under which conditions the voltage is applied. In this case, the voltage range extends from 1.38 volt to 1.45 volt, for frequencies from 4.65 gigahertz to 4.85 gigahertz. But from our previous chart, we know that the time spent at these frequencies is about 3%. So for light workloads that don't hit the power or the thermal constraints set by PBO, the algorithm finds that setting over 1.4 volts is perfectly fine.